Love is the greatest weapon that there is. You cannot afford to get out of love. You know something? Jesus, I really believe this, when Jesus ministered to those people and brought the power of God on the scene, that it was not only because of his love and passion for God, for the things of God, and for the people. He was connecting the people. But it also, also was retribution against the devil. What's the best way to get back at the devil? If he attacks you, go get somebody saved. Mm -hmm. Sickness comes on your body, pray for somebody else to be healed. Financial difficulty arises in your life. Then give a seed offering to a ministry. Go to your closet and find an article of clothing that you can give to your next door, next door neighbor. Give yourself out of it. Man, that's warfare. Zedekah. I've told you before, but uh, I think it bears repeating right now that... Uh, Judaism has a term, the Hebrew word Zedekah, which means acts of benevolence. And there are different kinds of acts of benevolence, but one of them is, according to my good friend, the late rabbi, Messianic rabbi, Dr. Rich Ford, would tell me, is that the scripture that say, love your enemy, the scripture that says that when you feed those that are poor, those that are against you even, how that it heaps coals of fire on their head, that is talking about the spirit that's driving people. It drives people into poverty, and it drives people into persecuting you. And so therefore, an act of Zedekah is an act of love that directs a spiritual kingdom missile directly against the overriding spirit heaping coals of fire on its head, the head demon that's afflicting the person to begin to tear it off to give them an opportunity. Now listen to me. To then change from a poverty mentality and poverty circumstances to then a prosperity mentality and for them to be able to then prosper in life. But also those who have set themselves up to bring wickedness against your life in whatever capacity, either personally somebody directly coming to persecute you, they don't like you, they're opposing you, or the wickedness that may be even in a nation that is attempting to influence the whole body of Christ in that nation, to influence your life negatively, that that Zedekah, that act of love, that act of benevolence, launches a missile against it to destroy its power. And because of that, to change it from the spiritual realm, not just the natural. We are called to abhor evil, but to not hate people. Jesus does not allow us to hate our accusers. Well, I tell you what, just in my head, it went like this. You were probably watching to see where I was going to go with it, and it must have pinged around about ten different directions. i got ten sermons right now I want to preach. <laughs> <clears throat> Jesus does not allow us to hate the people in the United States who do not agree with us. We are to love them. Love is a compassionate response to wickedness that allows us to begin to pray for them, minister Jesus to them, heal them, deliver them, Bring the power of the kingdom to them. That will change everything.
That's why I'm telling you, I firmly believe with everything that is in me because I know that in 2013, June, that Michael the War Angel took me up into the heavenlies and he showed me that swirling mass of rainbow colors that he called revival, spiritual awakening, coming down and settling over the United States of America. Revival is here. Revival is the answer. When we, like Jesus, will go into the spirit and immediately turn to take it out on the devil by ministering to people and getting them set free. When we do that, it breaks the connection in our hearts and on our lives that the enemy is trying to set up with the wickedness and with the woundedness. That make much sense to you? I think everybody in here has probably a, a number of stories that you could tell. But let me tell you a couple of mine. Let me tell you about a recent one that just happened this week. There's probably a number of you that may know that we have a building in a church building in Oregon. And uh, we put it up for sale so that we could transfer the finances down here. We don't need the building anymore. It's been for rent to some congregations recently. And uh, another congregation, they moved out a few months ago. We put it up for sale. And a, uh, a lady, in behalf of a nonprofit organization, made an offer on the building. Okay, Lord, I'm going to tell the story right now. Here it is. Public, I haven't said anything at all. So several months ago, she made an offer on the building. I accepted the offer because it was a good offer instructed that the contract be drawn up. While the contract was being drawn up, the lady asked if she could have a key that she could go in and steam clean the carpets just in preparation. And a written contract then was that she could have the key to do that and also she had a contractor that wanted to go in. There was, there was a leak somewhere. The former tenants had said there was a leak, a water leak, uh, that needed to be fixed. <clears throat> so it was written out. That's all she could do. She was not allowed to be in the building. She was not allowed to use the building it was, in any way, shape, or form. She took the key. And she moved into the building without permission, without our knowledge of doing so. We didn't find out for a couple of weeks later. Hmm. The contract was drawn up. She showed up, and I had signed the contract before, and then it was sent. And she showed up, signed the contract, and then was supposed to present the monies. She refused to present the monies, took the copy of the contract, and left, and was living in and occupying our property, our building. The, the contract, I immediately got a hold of an attorney, I immediately and talked to some other people that I know that are in the business of uh, uh, mortgages and stuff, and they said, you know, that the contract, it doesn't matter who signed the contract. If she hasn't fulfilled it, it's null and void. It's not a legal contract in any way, shape, or form, period. <coughs> and it cost us several thousand dollars to go through the legal system to have her forcibly removed from our building. In the meantime, she tore out our baptistry and sold it to another church. Dirty devil. <laughs> you know what? And sometimes those things happen. And and a lot of times people will ask, or even what will go through our minds is, why didn't we see that coming? You know, You're a prophet. <laughs> you know, I questioned the Lord about some of those things one day a long time ago. And he said, even I have a Judas. That's right. Mm. Wow. That's right. Uh -huh. So here's the situation. She's out of the building. She trashed it. 
Now we're, we're having somebody have to go in there and, and clean it up and haul all the junk away and so on. Uh, she's stolen the um, baptistry. She didn't have permission. The, con the contract was null and void, but even in the contract, if it was legal, stipulated that she was not able to do anything to the building, no alterations without written permission. Okay, So she's stolen. It, it just... Just like somebody stealing, you know, breaking into your house and stealing your goods and selling them. And so I, I filed a police report on it. But in the meantime, CK and I were praying about what do we do. All this stuff is just sickening. It's cost us money. My flesh wants to go after. Mm -hmm. And if the Holy Spirit told me it's okay and want to do it, then, then let me tell you. But, but I'm looking at see, the same situation I'm talking to you about. The best way to handle it in the Spirit. So we decide, let's find the church that she sold it to. Call the pastor and give the baptistry to him in order to cut that. See, that connection yeah. with us, and even though it cost us money, we require that of the Lord. The Lord can give me a hundred times more money than what it costs to have to deal with this situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't need to be thinking about that. I don't need to be tied. I don't need to have those tentacles connected with my emotions, my thought life, right. you know. All of those things. We need to do something about that. So as CK and I prayed about it, we said, okay, let's find the pastor. And when we find the pastor, let's call him up and give him the baptistry. So we prayed about it. CK says, I think the Lord just told me who it was. I called the man. And sure enough, he had it. He said, pastor, he said, I am just so... I, I'm so embarrassed by all this. You know, all I know is that somebody just offered us, we've been praying about a baptistry, and somebody offered us this baptistry, and, and, uh, and so we got it, and he said, then I heard. I heard what was going on. Because here's another thing. I didn't do it, but a, uh, new, a reporter for the local newspaper in that city caught wind of some things that were going on, went down and checked the court records, checked, uh, you know, that we were, were having her evicted, um, uh, the judge's signature on it to evict her, and they did some research on her and her background. It did a big article in the paper exposing her as a fraud. So God brings things to light, okay? And so he said, I saw the newspaper article. He said, man, it's a big stink bomb. The whole city knows what was done to you. He said, I didn't know what to do. And so when I took that baptistry and just stuck it in the back room and said, we just, we're not going to install it. We're not going to do anything with it until, you know, this whole thing comes down and we see what, you know, we, we may need to just give it back. Or whatever. And so I said, well, I appreciate that, brother. Here's what I want to do. Two things. Number one is that CK and I want to give you that baptistry. We want to sow it into your ministry as love. We want it to be moved from a situation between you and her and between us and you. Now, and cut her completely out of it. And, and of course, he, was, he couldn't believe it. He was just, you know, so thankful that we would do that. And the next thing that we need to do is pray against it. Because in the whole process, I, I, you know, had to dig into things, legally, the attorney, all the different things. Uh, she is a practicing witch. Wow. And so this has been not only an attack on us and the ministry, but now it has become a connection and an attack on you. And we need to get rid of it. Would you let me pray with you? Yeah. And so he said, oh, yes. So CK and I got on the phone, you know, with the uh, uh, speakerphone and just prayed with the gentleman, sewed it into his ministry, blessed him with it, and then bound and cut off that spirit of witchcraft, mm. all the evil, all the stuff there. 
And then he prayed back. And one of the things that we did was we agreed that by sowing, we're sowing a baptistry into another man's ministry to reap back our building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Lord spoke to us the same day and said, it's time, now go get your building. Mm -hmm. So right now, I am actively looking and going to go get our building. Okay, we've been meeting, I mean, here in the, the offices, we're here today, but our, our main services are over at, uh, you know, the Hampton Inn, Seven Hills Convention Center. We meet there twice a month for, for the big meetings, worship, and, and, and the whole thing, and then we do our others here in the office complex. But it's time for our building. Amen. Time for our building. Mm -hmm. It's time for our building. Yes. yes. Amen. Yes. Yeah. It's here. God said. Go get it. Amen. Okay. So pray for me. I don't know whether it's going to be, you know, going to take me a day or a week, whatever, to find it. But it's ours. Amen. And we so see the enemy came in and tried to rob from God. Rob the ministry, not only us, but also to connect with that other church and to sow all kinds of uh, strife and problems. I, I'm, that woman's wicked. Mm -hmm. I better not tell any more because I know a lot of things. <laughs> I don't want to get in the flesh about. I want to stay in the spirit. So as an act of Zedekah, as an act of love, as an act of giving, giving can be one of the most powerful Amen. spiritual weapons that there is. Amen. And what it did was it just broke all of that connection off of our lives. You get what I'm talking about? Yes. I know you understand. Absolutely. Yes.